I didn't want to get too political myself today, but I will say that I think that, that uh, the top five candidates should all be asked one question, and that's, do you agree with this online vote? That way, we can as a party say, well, this is what the top of the ticket is thinking, and I don't mind waiting until the person in the in-person convention when we're all together to do this. So, I mean, that's just kind of my thought. I mean, it'd be up to each individual candidate whether or not they'd address that. You know, I had of, of all the different propositions I've heard, many of whom uh, or, or many of which involve me in some way having a role either making a motion or lobbying the LNC or uh doing something with the other candidates, I think that's the best one is if the five of us, is that, is that a clear, I mean, could we include, uh, no, I, I think that's, I think at the time, I mean, I would say if we include Mons, we have to think about including Dan and Arvin and not that I'm against that, but that it, it, I think there is a pretty clear drop off with the top five. And if the top five of us signed on to something, and by the way, I want to point out, and you know, while you know, I've been pushing for the in-person convention and vote for since the beginning, um, and and I do admit that it favor, I do believe it favors me strategically. Um, I'm doing it primarily because of the integrity of the vote and the organization, and I would be taking that position even if I thought it did not favor. Me. So, uh, yeah, but maybe maybe well, so CJ, there's also. You know, I've been talking to Mimi Robson, or Robson from California about uh, what's going on with her state there. I sat in on the COC meeting. Uh, that's the, the, no, not COC, that's Convention Oversight Committee. Or whatever. California Central Committee is what, the, what I think they got Central Committee meeting last night. And they had, you know, something like 50 people. This is just for delegates and alternates, of which in California there are 150 something. 100, I think it's 157, 107 delegates, 100 and, or, and then 50 alternates. Uh, they only had about 50 people there, which is actually good. It's a significant sign of the strength of, of, you know, LP California that even with, you know, whatever notice, you know, that, that many people show up. But it, they're not going to be able to get that many people credentialed. And a lot of the state chairs are considering leading a revolt at the last minute here uh, to say... Yeah, we're not going to participate because we don't have faith in the integrity of this process. And I mean, I think there, that we all kind of have to go into what's happening Friday with, well, the board technically voted on this. The LNC did vote to authorize Nick to do this. Uh, if they don't, and, and so this is like one of the other propositions is that the the uh, the LNC reversed their vote. Now seeing what a cluster fuck we're going, like, uh, like uh, I and, and this is like I'll put this out here as a public plea to, to the LNC. If you can intervene right now, you, I know you can. If you can get that, I think it's a now you need two thirds to overturn, but you don't. You know, all it takes is a simple majority and a different mechanism. I mean, you can remove Nick from the chairmanship, I and mean, even that has been proposed at this point, but. You, if, if 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 fifty plus percent of the LNC and it's what, nine, I think it's the 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 voting body is seventeen. I mean, it's it, the, the critical votes come down usually nine seven, um, with the chair not being allowed to vote. So I mean, yeah, if, if a majority of the LNC, it's not that many of you. If you decide, hey, this is a clusterfuck, we need to save our party from the embarrassment. And the inevitable civil war that's going to come from Nick attempting to do a vote online like this when we can do an in-person convention, please do it. Please, please intervene. Um, I'm, I'm with CJ's. I CJ, please remind me. I'm going to be pursuing that, uh, you know, after the show. To, uh, and I'm writing. I'm writing notes here. Um, uh, like all the things, all the things I have to do between noon when we cut. And one when my next interview starts. Oh yeah, I always forget to eat. I'm gonna I'm gonna put lunch on on my list here. Uh, but yeah, other you know the, the top five candidates pledge or, or or statement about the online vote. Um, I mean, if we say you know we'll 
we'll, we'll take this as a, you know, the, the, none of us are, you know, would endorse this vote that we all say that it's, it's not legitimate. We, we're going to take this as, we're going to take this as a straw poll. Like that's it. This where we're, that we are going, we are, go, we as the top five candidates agree that we would treat whatever happens this weekend as a non-binding straw poll and encourage our delegates to go through and, 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 and expect that we will go through with a contested convention as per our bylaws. And that is the only, that is the outcome that we will respect. Um, that could, I mean, that would, that could be enough, but that's not, that's not, that, that still might give us a, a, a nominee, a presumptive nominee, right? Oh, that, that would that would also make things a lot more fun. We can all keep running and keep having debates, and there can be a presumptive nominee, and then we look more like the Democrats or Republicans. We get the news story. I mean, maybe that's the best for the party. Got to game all of that out. Back to the comments, Mr. Freedom. Fair enough. That was good. I liked all that. <clears throat> Let's see, uh, Benjamin Henry on YouTube. I think Larry Sharp is highly likely to get the VP nomination, and he's spoken really favorably about Adam recently. I wonder how Adam feels about likely working with him. Yeah, I love Larry Sharp. You know, and to have two Marines on the ticket, you know, I think that, that could be really cool. Um, not going to lie about that. That's something, you know, and it's funny. I say that about identity politics because that's identity politics. It's still appeal to authority bullshit. I mean, and it's not, you guys know better. People watching this, you're not supporting me because I'm a former Marine. That's bullshit. You know, you're supporting me because being a former Marine allows me to connect with people for whom that matters. Right, right. But guess what? So does being a half black dude, you know, and, and Larry mm -hmm. bringing a little more, or half Jewish, you know, bringing a little more color to the race uh, would, would be very cool. And I've been quoting Larry Sharp on a daily basis now. I think his quote, and it, for me, it's kind of reaching across to you know, his more pragmatic demographic of the party to say a, a libertarian is someone who says you can be as liberal or conservative as you want, as long as you don't force it on anybody else. That's, that's, that's a great Larry Sharp quote, isn't it? Yeah. And, and I would say, but that, that proves the point of my platform. Therefore, localization. Therefore, you must decentralize government and give people the right to be as liberal or as conservative as they want, as long as they don't force it on it. Because right now you're forcing the centralized system on everybody. And I, I think Larry, uh, I, I think there, there are a lot of others uh, who would be great VP nominees. I think Larry represents, uh, you know, a great sort of fusion ticket for the party in a lot of ways, Larry and myself. And I know that Larry has uh, won the commitment to principles of, of libertarianism that are a prerequisite for me to share a ticket with somebody, right? Um, although I, I was disappointed to see him go with Gray, uh, to, to even team up with him, um, I know that while Larry and I disagree about as much as possible on strategy in, in some in some way, and in a lot of ways we're on the same page, but in most ways we're libertarians, fighting for libertarianism, the world set free in our lifetimes. But I know that if the Libertarian Party said, hey, you know, for the top of the ticket, we want Kokesh because we want localization as our strategic direction, but we like Larry as a candidate, we want him as the VP nominee, Larry is a good team player and would say, yeah, this is like, and I've talked to him about localization specifically. He's like, yeah, I, I disagree with that strategically. I, I, I agree with that 100%. If we could do that, that would be great. You know, I, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but he's so, so like, I mean, when it comes down to he's a voluntarist too. He's a principled libertarian. So I got another note. Larry Sharp is a great candidate to help keep the party together. Yes. So especially if things go through with confidence this weekend, you know, Larry Sharp would be a, would be a great sort of nominee for me to make a ticket that would, that would be a unifying ticket for the party. Comments? Anything else, Tim? Uh, well, Benjamin Hunter here says, no, I want them to make a decision on the nominee ASAP, which is, yeah, I'm excited to hear the nominee, too, because personally, my bias thinks you're going to win it, but we need to do what's <coughs> the majority. We need to play it out to, you know... Like yeah, you so the, the urgency nominee. issue. So here, about the urgency issue, we do our nominating convention normally 
right now, mid, mid late May. And we could be doing it a lot earlier. And this was something I actually briefly tried to push for in 2018 is that we reschedule and it just it didn't work this I was like, all right we'll do it for next time but that we have our nominating convention in january and then it, and then our primary is more happening in line with the old parties and then we have a nominee in time to be running against all of them while they're still doing their debates and then we have a time advantage as opposed to the disadvantage that we have now but here's the bigger disadvantage is that libertarians don't support candidates of primaries and now it's come out recently that uh, we, we see the effect of national libertarian party policy revealed and that we have been uh, arvin and myself especially but kim ruff and uh i mean really the rest of us asking lp national to cover the race to cover like not to take sides to take favors but like have some objective means maybe it's hey, if a state party as a poll and has these candidates in their debate or at their convention you share those debates and forums you know just if, if it's a, just share it on national social media and then all of us as candidates get the benefit of that the party grows this is why the old parties have big public primaries like you don't i'm not saying imitate them but understand why they're doing what they're doing and learn from it and the reason they were doing this apparently and this is spe this part is speculative right but it looked like it looks like they were intentionally suppressing the rest of us in order to favor Amash. Amash jumps in at the last minute. Then they put the LPKY on you know debate on the, the Libertarian Party National YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Then they uh, start promoting the race nationally. You know, and I got I they we retweeted or tweeted something of mine recently, and I was like, do, do, are they changing? Do I have, do I have someone on the inside now? <laughs> Is there someone at LP National? Who runs LP National's Twitter feed? You're not following the Nick Sarwark bias program anymore. You know, I, I, you know, I, I don't. I don't I, there are so many ways we could go with that. And maybe it was for Jim Gray, right? Same thing, coming in right at the last second, just before a mosh there, and the the effect of the manipulation is the same. So whether we do it now or in July really doesn't matter as I see it when there are these bigger factors in the urgency of the nominating process and how do we actually take advantage of it. Should we have the party itself get behind the primary process a lot more? Absolutely. And then we'd have, we, and then, but see now, now here's an advantage in the delay. So the argument for urgency, Jim, is do it now, get the nominee up, get everybody behind them. First of all, I don't think you're going to really be able to get people behind a nominee without that in-person convention, right? There's a process of coming together that you can look people in the eye and say, okay, we all agreed on this. We all see what was happening here. We come together as a party. Now we're getting behind the nominee. But we've not even had that process, let alone a better process of vetting. Like now, what's kind of cool about this is that it's forced everybody now to pay attention to the Libertarian primary the way we should have been paying attention to it months ago. So why not milk it now? Why not draw it out? Why not give us another almost two months really of, of, of more online debates? Of let's do a tour to Orlando, you know. Let let's really vet the candidates now that we have this. Let's let's get behind now that we have at least a serious top five. And even if your favorite isn't among the top five, let's get behind these top candidates and blow up all of us and blow up the party and show the country that we have. Hey, let's let's include the, the way that Democrats and Republicans include the general public in their primary process. We can do that now. That's another reason. I mean, that's second. It's that's still to me a huge secondary towards uh, behind the integrity. We we need the integrity of the vote right. to make sure that the, we that it's honest and that, that we have the people come together. Great. Um, but yeah, now you see why there's there's so much more to it, and and most people in this like I I wish they were watching. I, you know maybe. From the, the, the end of our opener to, to now, all this talk about the president, I, I wish every delegate could see this.
but they they're not going to mo, mo, you know and as libertarians we have this typical fallacy of assuming that other people aren't low information voters that they all know as much as how can you vote for trump and biden when this and this and this and this and this and didn't you read this and what about this book and this article and this and you didn't see that video how can you well they didn't they didn't see any of that you know like they, no they, they they're and I, I i have to be reminding libertarians in, in humility here you know that if the point of libertarianism is to minimize the role of government in your life and you then spend all of your life talking about government you might be screwing it up you might have missed the point maybe the average american in that sense is way more libertarian and all we have to do is connect with them and show them that applying these ideas and these principles gives them a better policy answer and it's it can be really that fun and simple and positive and not about arguing with people and that's you know, a big part of localization is that we're not arguing with people anymore, issue by issue. We're uniting people on principle, on live and let live. Anyway, all right, that's so. But yeah, it's the same thing with the delegates. Most delegates, even you, Jim, even you, as someone who's in, as involved as you are, are you? Yeah, I saw well, during the last twenty minutes, you've had a few moments. Where you're like, oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, Adam just zoomed me out and revealed this whole other giant side of things that I hadn't considered, and it revealed to me how small my view on this really was. That's that's what I offer. That's that's the value. That's that's why I'm so grateful to have everybody's support.